Namaskar, hello and welcome to NCRT's live phone-in program. My name is Tanvi Kharana and this is a science session for all the class 10th students. The topic is Heredity and Evolution Part 3. Part 1 and Part 2 has already been covered and we'll talk about Part 3 today. We'll go further today and uh, if you have any questions regarding any of the uh, the things related to it may be genes, genetics, heredity, evolution, anything at all you can please contact us on our toll free numbers which are 1-800-112199 and 1-800-111265. Apart from this, if you want to contact us through email, our email id is ciet munch at the rate gmail.com you're watching us live on our youtube channel which is ncert official you can also write your questions your queries your doubts in the live chat box of our youtube channel we'll get them instantly in and uh, for next 45 minutes our expert will be here and she'll be answering all your questions and you're watching us live on various other channels as well like Swam Prabha channel number 31 Kishore Munch. If you have Tata Sky at your place, then you need to tune in to channel number 756. On Dish TV, the channel number is 950. On Airtel, the channel number is 440. For Videocon, please go to channel number 477. On DD Free Dish channel, it's 128 channel number. And on Sun Direct, the channel number is 793. So there are various mediums through which you can connect with us and participate in this session as well. If you want to watch the old sessions which have already been uh, done and you haven't seen them, you ha might have missed them, then please download the app Kishore Munch for all those sessions. And uh, now let's meet our expert for this session. We have with us Dr. C.V. Shimre. Welcome, yeah, ma'am. Thank you. Ma'am is from Department of Education in Science and Mathematics, NCRT. And like I said, she'll be talking about heredity and evolution. So let's begin with a question which is related to part two. Ma'am, uh, last time you gave an example of a monohybrid cross. Mm -hmm. So because you've already covered that, uh, let's begin with an example. Okay. So uh, yes, we had covered this monohybrid cross in the previous session and we had taken an example of a uh, Fl uh, flower color, pea plant flower color. So the purple color and the white uh, colors that we took uh, so as to show how a monohybrid cross takes place. So if I can just take you back to the slide there uh, where we had shown the monohybrid cross. Can we have the slide please? Yes. So there you have there where we had shown what a mon how a monohybrid cross happens in a pea plant of in the flowers of the pea plant. So we uh, concluded that the phenotypic ratio is 3 is to 1. That means that every time there is a cross between uh, a hybrid, that means a hybrid in the sense that uh, heterozygous individuals, that means which carries genes for alleles both for uh, purple color flower as well as white color flower. As long as the dominant allele is present, then you have the purple uh, color flower. And when you have both the alleles in a recessive, uh, then you have the white f flower color. So that's how you get the 3 to 1 ratio of the phenotypic ratio and we also came across the genotypic ratio in, in the sense that uh, when you look into the genes then it turns out to be 1 is to 2 is to 1. That means that uh, the genes genotypic ratio and the phenotypic ratio turns out to be different. So in this session we are trying going to take another example so that students are familiar with uh, the monohybrid cross they are clear with it so we have taken this example uh, so i'll just show you in this overhead camera there can we can you please take me to there you go so you have a uh, another example where uh, we have taken a uh, pea plant the height of a height uh, of the pea plant that is the stem height tall plants and short plants so again uh, we had discussed uh, in the previous session where uh, mendel had come up with all kinds of dominant and recessive characters. So it turns out that tall plants are uh, always, whenever there are alleles for this tallness, then this character is expressed. And when uh, the alleles for the short shortness, that is the recessive alleles are present in two. That means both the alleles are in recessive, uh, 
then you have the short plan. So, this is one example. So, let us see. So, in order to get again, uh, what is a monohybrid cross? Monohybrid cross is a cross between individuals which are heterozygous for a single trait. That means, for example, as you can see in this slide, uh, in this uh, screen, so you can see this this is a hybrid because in the sense that it is heterozygous it has one big t and one small t that means the dominant allele is present as well as the recessive allele is present so in order to get this individual this offspring what you have to do is we have to take two parents which are homozygous which are true breed or the pure breed which we had already discussed in the previous session so when you take this pla parent plants which are homozygous for tallness and which are uh, homozygous for shortness that means they are dwarf plants. So, when you take these two plants what is possible is for this plant the possible gametes that this plant can produce is this one. So, with a capital T that means a dominant uh, allele whereas for the short plants or the dwarf plants the possible gamete that it can produce it is the recessive allele that is a small t. So, when this gamete the dominant allele and the recessive allele when these two gametes they fertilize what you find is in the F1 generation that is the first filial generation or the first uh, set of offspring that you get is all the individuals will have will have this combination that is they will be heterozygous meaning that they will have the dominant allele as well as the uh, recessive allele. So, there this is the heterozygote that you have now you want to cross individuals like this plants which have these types of characters. So, when you cross these types of characters uh, what you are going to have is again the possible gametes it can produce this plant can produce is one with a dominant allele another one with a recessive allele. So, it can produce two types of gametes. So, if you put them in a Punnett square so you just put them down here and you can represent either this or this as male or female or uh, gametes that is the sperms or eggs either this or this. So, it does not make any difference. So, all you have to do is you bring those gametes here. So, you are bringing them here. Similarly, you are bringing since you are crossing same. So, the gametes will also be same. So, you are bringing the gametes here, here and so what happens now? So, in the F2 generation when these two gametes combine what kind of individuals we are going to uh, they are going to produce is. So, this one individual it is going to produce by the combination of these two gametes. What happens when this and this gamete combines? So, you are going to find an individual an offspring like this with this genetic constitution. What happens when this gamete and this gamete combines? Then you will find and similarly what happens when this gamete and this gamete uh, they fertilize. So, you will find an individual with this genetic constitution. So, if we look at this genetic constitution you find that we have said that what kind of phenotype these individuals will have. For example, it has the dominant allele here in this plant and so definitely it is going to be a tall plant since it has a, a dominant allele. Here also it has one dominant allele. So, as long as the dominant allele is present it is going to express phenotypically. So, you are going to have a tall plant here. This plant is going to be tall. Similarly, in this case since you have the dominant allele it is going to be tall again, but here in this case you do not have the dominant allele and so the recessive allele will express and so you have the dwarf plan or the short plan. So, it is let us call it short. So, look at this now. So, you have this individuals this pot these are the individuals that is possible. It is not that just these individuals will uh, produce uh, as an offspring, but these are the possible options predictions that can happen. So, you have phenotypically you have three tall plants and one short plant, but if you look genotypically if you look at the genes you have like for example, you have this gene both dominant alleles are present. So, you do not find anywhere else. So, there is the genetic uh, combination is you will say that this is heteros uh, homozygous. So, you will say that uh, if I can take a little bit down here. So, you will say that here it is 1 right. So, then you have another combination genetic com combination like with one dominant allele and one recessive allele, one dominant allele and one recessive allele. So, the, they are heterozygous, they are heterozygous. So, you have two of those. Then you have just one of this genetic combination that means two recessive alleles. So, you have one. So, when you look at the genetic uh, ratio 
genotype which we call genotype it is 1 is to 2 is to 1 but when you look at the phenotype that means what is seen then you find it is 3 is to 1 so the phenotypic ratio is 3 is to 1 that means 3 tall plants and 1 uh, short plant so this is what you get in a monohybrid cross so you take any uh, any character for that matter so uh, uh, Mendel had selected some identified some 7 characters contrasting characters so you get the same result for all this and when he actually grew those plants what happened was he found that he actually found that the plants that uh, the number of plants that came out from those uh, crossing where it was like I had this. So, he found that the ratio was out of the 1600, uh, 1064 plants that he planted of this cross, he found that 787 were tall and 277 were short. He actually counted them. So, that is how it happens. So, if you put them into a form of a ratio, then it will be like, it will be almost like 3 is to 1. Exactly, it is 2.84 2 is to 1. So, which is almost 3 is to 1 ratio. So, so the predictions come, I mean, in reality also, it is almost the same as the predictions. That is uh, what we are trying to say through this monohybrid cross, right. So, I think uh, we should stop at that uh, related to monohybrid cross because we had already discussed this uh, in the previous session also. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, let us talk about dihybrid cross then. Okay. Uh, can we just get into the test cross before that, before we get into the dihybrid cross because uh, test cross uh, happens to be more related to this monohybrid cross in this sense. So, uh, there is something called test cross. Uh, so, what is this test cross? Test cross is done when you do not know, you want to identify the parent or, of a plant, I mean the genetic constitution of a plant. What Phenotypically, you know because the flowers are blooming, so you know the flower <laughs> color, the seed shapes and all, you can open the seed and you can see the shape. But genotypically, what is the ge uh, genetic constitution of that plant? In order to identify that, then you, you use this test cross. So, for example, let me take one of those. Uh, this is a test cross. Uh, let's, uh, can you please take me to that? Okay. So, you have this test cross. I can... So, in this, uh, we had already discussed about the purple flower color so uh, of the pea plant. So, in case you find a purple flower color, so there are two possibilities. The two possibilities are that the purple flower color can be homozygous, I, I mean this one, homozygous for purple uh, flower color or it can be heterozygous because this kind of flower color, this as well as this will produce purple flower color in pea plants. So, now you do not know. So, you know the fl flower, you know the plant, you saw, you see the plant and it has purple flower color, but you do not know the genetic constitution of that. So, what do you do? There are two possibilities as I said, either it will be homozygous dominant, both the uh, alleles will have this dominant allele or one of the alleles will have one dominant allele. So, it will still be purple, it will still produce purple flower color. So, the prediction, so those are the two possibilities. So, let us take the first possibility. So, in order to find out what it would be, so what we do is we cross it with a homozygous recessive plant, for example, this which has two recessive alleles, two recessive alleles. So, you cross the plant with uh, plant which are uh, pure breed, true breed or which are recessive, uh, homozygous recessive. So, let us take this uh, in the form of, so again this plant with one in heterozygous condition can produce two types of gametes again. That is one dominant allele, one recessive allele. This kind of recessive uh, dominant, uh, recessive homozygous plant can produce only one type of gamete. So, what you do is again similarly like we did before, you bring these gametes here. So, since it can produce only one type, so you just put it up there. But in this case, since there are two types of gametes that it can produce, so you bring one gamete here, you bring another gamete here. So, either this or this can be male or female, so it does not make any difference. So, what happens? So, when this and this gamete fuses or fertilizes, the type of individual it is going to produce is P and this. Similarly, when you cross this, uh, I mean when this gamete and this gamete fuses, fertilization happens, then what you find is it will produce individuals like this. In this case, it will produce 
individuals like this with two recessive alleles. In this case also it will produce individuals with two recessive alleles. So let's go to the second prediction that the plant might be homozygous dominant. That means it might have uh, both alleles might have the dominant allele. Mm -hmm. So in that case when you cross it similarly again it can produce only one kind of gamete this parent. This parent can produce also produce only one kind of gamete. So you just put them up here again this gametes you just put them up here. So uh, it does not hardly make any difference whether this is male or this is female again. Mm -hmm. So but what kind of individual it is going to produce is this and this gametes when they fuse they will produce this kind of individuals. So this is the offspring that it's going to produce. Similarly for this, it produces this. Then when this two gametes fuses, it produces. Similarly for this. So this is the kinds of uh, individuals after the fusion of these kinds of gametes. So you find different individuals, I mean offsprings produce in the next generation when you cross, uh, wh when you first prediction is that if the plant which had a purple flower color was uh, had just one dominant allele. So the prediction then what you will get in the next generation is this. Then when if we say that okay the purple uh, plant flower plant must be homozygous dominant then the possible individuals offspring that it will produce after crossing with a recessive uh, dominant plant is this. So what do you find here? So here we find that it is again purple flower color because the purple dominant allele is present. So you will find this is purple flower color. Here also since there is one dominant allele, so you will still find up the individual will be purple, uh, it will produce purple flower color. Here both the alleles are recessive and so you will find white flower color. Again here, again both the alleles are recessive so you will find a white flower color. What happens here? Again, since you have one dominant allele, it is going to produce purple flower color. Here also again, it will produce purple flower color. Here it produces again, since there is one dominant allele, it will produce one purple flower color. Then again, here also it produces purple flower color because there is one dominant allele here. So these are the possible offsprings it can produce uh, after uh, crossing the heterozygous uh, plant with a uh, recessive uh, homozygous uh, plants. So this is the combination it can produce and when you cross this with this, these are possible offsprings it can produce. Okay. So these are the things. So when we actually again. Uh, so um, ma'am I have a question here. Okay. So if uh, you are saying if a pea plant has purple uh, flower color, mm -hmm. so uh, it has alleles only for purple color. No, it can have either alleles for both purple, both the alleles can be purple for purple flower color mm -hmm. or both the alleles can be for if the purple, if it is a purple flower color, one of the alleles can be uh, for the purple flower color. Okay. That means it is dominant. As we said that it is uh, purple flower color is dominant over the white flower. So as long as you have one allele mm -hmm. of the purple flower color, it will express as you will see the flower pur purple in color. So only when you have two of those recessive alleles then that is a small p, then you'll, you'll, it will be white. Okay. So that's what happens. So wherever the dominant allele yes. is there, mm -hmm. it will be purple. Yes, yeah. Okay. So oh, oh, the possibilities are this, this again uh, maybe we can go back to the slide, this overhead camera again. Can you take us to the overhead camera again? So as we see uh, in this predictions, so in this kind of prediction, so you find all the flower are purple in color. Right. But in this case, there are some white, uh, purple, uh, white and purple. It's a mix of both. Yeah. Phenotypically, genotypically, it's different uh, here. It is genotypically also it's same here. Yeah. So, but the possibilities are different. So if you, so when you actually grow. So these are the predi predictions based on calculations. Mathematically, okay. this is possible. Mm. But when you actually grow, what happens is you have to see what do you find when you actually cross these two plants. So if you find that all the flower colors were purple, mm. so when you actually grow them, when you actually grow the plants with uh, this kind of uh, genetic constitution and this kind of genetic constitution, mm. and if you find that all the flower colors are purple, mm. then you can say that okay the 
question that we asked initially that what is the uh, genetic constitution of that plant which had purple color, we can say that it is homozygous dominant. That means both the peas are dominant, both, uh, that plant will have a, both uh, dominant alleles. But in case you find that some of the uh, offsprings, when you actually cross them, when you actually grow the pea plants, when you f if you find that some of the plants produce white flower colors, mm -hmm. that means you can say that okay. Then the question that we asked, what was the genetic constitution of that plant which had purple flower color? That means you can say that it had this one, it is heterozygous individual. That means okay. it had one allele with purple flower uh, color and another allele for the uh, white flower color. So that is how you predict. Uh, so these are the calculations, possibilities mathematically, but when you actually grow them, you see them and so you can conclude, okay, now based on calculation, so this is the possibility. If all the flowers were purple, then this is the parent, this is the possible parent, which we did not know. Because initially we just saw the flower and it was purple. We did not know whether it was PP, big capital P, both were dominant alleles or one of those were dominant and one were alleles. But based on this calculation and when we actually plan them, then we can conclude w what genetic constitution that plant had. Okay. So that is the uh, I mean importance of uh, using test cross that you can actually find out the genetic constitution of the parent of the unknown parent. Okay. Right? And so that is Mendel's experiment? Yes. Okay. One of those. Yeah. All right. So, so um, now can we talk about dye hybrid cross? Yes, we can. I think we should uh, go ahead with that. Mm. Shall we? Yes. Okay. So can we take again go back to the slide uh, overhead? Yes. I think it's visible out there. Okay. So again, what is a dye hybrid cross? A dye hybrid cross is a cross between uh, individuals, two individuals which are heterozygous mm -hmm. for two characters. In monohybrid, it was a cross between individuals which are heterozygous for one character. Mm -hmm. So in dihybrid cross, it is a cross between individuals which are heterozygous for two characters. For example, this is a heterozygote, this is a hybrid. So what we want to do is we want to cross this and similar plants like this. Mm -hmm. So this is a heterozygote because it has as you can see the dominant allele and the recessive allele, dominant allele and recessive allele for two characters. Mm -hmm. So as you can see here, so Y, big Y represents the yellow color seed, uh, seed color of the pea plant, okay. small Y represents a green color, green seed color. Simi uh, similarly, R, capital R represents the round seed shape whereas the small R represents the wrinkle she uh, seed shape. So this uh, are the two characters that we have taken for this example for the di to show the dihybrid cross. Okay. So this is a hybrid which you get again after crossing a homozygous in the uh, parents, mm. homozygous dominant parents. As you can see, they're homozygous because their the alleles are both same. Yeah. Even here, even for the color seed color, it's the both the same alleles. Uh, even for seed shape, it is the same uh, allele that is present. So it is homozygous dominant in both. Okay. As, as uh, earlier we had pointed out that yellow color is always dominant over the green color seed and round shape of the seed is always dominant over the wrinkle shape uh, seed. Okay. So then another parent that you take is the homozygous recessive parents. That means all the genes alleles are in recessive nature. So you can see there. So you take these kinds of parents because if you don't take this homozygous parents, mm -hmm. what will happen is you are not going to get a heterozygote. Okay. So in order to get a hybrid mm -hmm. or heterozygote, you need this pure breed parents. Okay. So that is the reason we are taking these kinds of pure breed parents which have which are homozygous for the character. Mm -hmm. So then what kind of genes uh, I mean gametes this parent can produce? So it can produce just one kind of gamete that is Y, big capital Y and capital R. So this is the only type of gamete this parent can produce. What about this parent? So it can also produce only one kind of gamete that is small Y and capital Y. So when these two gametes, they fertilize, they fuse, mm -hmm. the individual, the offspring that they are going to produce is this, a, het a hybrid or a heterozygote. That means a plant 
which is heterozygous for both the characters, right? Be heterozygous because you have one dominant allele, yeah. we have one recessive allele for both the characters. Mm -hmm. So it is a heterozygote now or a hybrid. So you want to cross similar plants like this. So you are going to grow them in, uh, re in re on, on the field as well as you are calculating it. So if we want to calculate it, so what Mendel did was that, why he did was that he was interested in finding out how these characters are transferred to the next generation whether these two characters go together mm. always that means that whether roundness is controlled by the seed uh, color mm. or vi uh, vice versa so if that is the case then what is going to happen is you are always going to have this kind of gametes over different over the over generations mm. so that is what he was trying to find out so he was trying to find out whether these two characters are inherited together so there are two predictions again the possibilities are one hypothesis is that they are dependents that means that they these two characters they go hand in hand they do not segregate but they come together over generations that is one possibility another possibility is that no they it has seed color has nothing to do with the seed shape in terms of inheritance so whatever is inherited related to seed color has nothing to do with the inheritance of seed shape so that's that there are two uh, predictions so if we look at the first prediction here so again what kind of gametes this can produce so if we say that this gametes uh, i mean the seed color is dependent upon the inheritance of seed color is dependent upon the uh, transmission or the inheritance of seed shape that that means that you are still going to have this kind of gametes in this generation mm -hmm. so you take this gamete here you just bring them up just like that so since you are using the same thing so you are crossing them so you are bringing them here so when you cross this so what what kind of individuals it's going to produce is this and this gametes when you fuse them it produces individuals like this similarly when you cross uh, i mean when you combine these two gametes when they fertilize what they produce is individuals like this and again in this case you will produce it will produce an individuals like this here it will produce an individual see so this is what it is it will produce if always the seed shape and the seed color were going together these characters were transmitted together then these are the possible individuals that you are going to produce from such kinds of uh, combinations but now if we say that the seed color inheritance of the seed color has nothing to do with the inheritance of the seed shape then what will happen is so what are the possible gametes for this so the possible gametes it can produce is this because you can produce a gamete with this and this so that's what you have you can produce a gamete with this and this so that's what you have you can produce a gamete with this and this that's what you have so there are four possible gam uh, gametes that you can produce from this kind of parent. So since you are going to cross these kinds of parents only, mm -hmm. so you can just list them, it is going to be the same. The kinds of gametes, another individual of this, th this genetic constitution will produce these kinds of gametes. Mm -hmm. So you just list them down. Again, it hardly makes any difference whether this is male or this is female. So that is just for indication just to uh, show that there are, these are gametes and when you say gametes fertilizer for fertilization happens and or fertilization happens and fertilization happens between gametes male and female gametes that's the reason we are just representing them as male and female otherwise uh, it hardly makes any difference whether you put this this here or there so what happens is when these two this kinds of gametes are present so wh what individuals it can produce so when these two gametes combine or fertilize you will find individuals like they produce when this and this kinds of gametes combine you will find this kinds of gametes here this and this will produce this and this and this will produce this similarly let us do it quickly since we will be running out of time so why and why so this is what it's going to produce so you can see here so you have 
bit here. So then you have here one of those because you're crossing this and then what about this you will have so you can help me Tanvi yeah so you have this so then when you combine these two gametes then it produces this kinds of individual so these are the possible individuals it can produce when you cross at two, these kinds of heterozygous plants mm. so uh, what are these so if you look at this you can start counting them. So this will have yellow, yellow seed color and yeah. round. round. This will have yellow seed color and, and again round because it has one dominant uh, allele for the roundness. Yeah. Then this will have again, again uh, yellow, yellow and round. round. This will also be yellow and round. This will also be yellow and round. What about this? This would be yellow, but uh, it won't be round. It will be, be green. It will be wrinkled, right? So, what about this? Yellow and round again. Yellow and round. Again, yellow, but not wrinkled. round. Wrinkled. So, so when you find different combinations. So, when you look at the phenotype, phenotypically, that means what is visible. So, the ratio that you find is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. That means if you start counting the similar, you know, round and as you just said, round and wrinkled or round and uh, yellow and round or yellow, yellow and wrinkled yeah, or, or round and wrinkled you know different combinations so it will have this one so students can go back and do this calculation actually count them so these are the possibilities but here in this case you find what do you find here yeah here the ratio would be one is to two is to one that is phenotypically or genotypically uh, genotypically so uh, yes so but phenotypically it's going to be because since we are talking here about phenotyp uh, phenotypes mm -hmm. phenotypically it's going to be 3 is to 1 so what's happening here is when he actually planted them mm -hmm. he found something like this mm -hmm. for example he found the plants uh, of those many plants he counted the plants actually so he took the seeds and he, uh, he f uh, tried to find out okay what kinds of plants had what kinds of seeds mm -hmm. so when he did that he found that round and wrinkled and all, all those things the ratio turns out to be 909 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 mm -hmm. I, I, in the sense that uh, like out of 556 plants that he counted mm -hmm. you know so it turned out to be th those many so some plants that ra seed some plants were round and wrinkled some plants were yellow and uh, i mean the seeds were yellow and wrinkled and things like that so when we actually did that actually it performed an experiment not the calculations these are again predictions mm -hmm. but when he actually grew the plants in the field like 556 plants that he planted of these combinations mm -hmm. you know then what he found was that the offsprings were like it came into the ratio of 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to ratio mm -hmm. so what he concluded was that mm -hmm. uh, I have a conclusion of what he did from the so what he concluded, what Mendel concluded from that, uh, can we take, go to the, yes. So what he concluded was that each pair of alleles segregate independently of each other. That means that the roundness has nothing to do with the seed color. Mm. So it segregates or it, it is inherited independently, these two are in, inherited or transmitted independently to the next offspring. Okay. Because he found this, can we go back to the overhead again? So, because he found this, mm. this is what he actually found. Although the ratio is not exactly 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1, sometimes it is like uh, 8.9 or sometimes it is like 9.1, you know. So, it depends. But it's almost like 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 ratio is what he got when he actually planted the plants. So, this means that this hypothesis cannot be accepted. This hypothesis is what happens in reality. So that's how he uh, came up with his uh, conclusion. conclusion that these characters, these two characters are transmitted or inherited independently of each other. So that means that they assort independently. So that's what he concluded from that uh, experiment. So that's all about the dihybrid cross. So if you cross uh, other characters also, but there is a condition for the dihybrid uh, cross. Mm -hmm. So uh, what happens? So what is important is that if uh, these two C, uh, characters, which we said there are two characters required in a dihybrid cross. So if these two characters are very close in the chromosome, mm -hmm. 
then the independent assortment is not likely to happen. Mm -hmm. They are going to go together. You know, it's going to be controlled. I mean, they are almost going to be, whenever the seed color uh, is there, then the seed shape is, if it is adjacent, if the genes are really close in the chromosome, mm -hmm. then that this independent assortment will may not happen. Okay. So the farther they are, it is most likely that they will assort independently. They will have no control over each other. Okay. And if they are in a different chromosome, they really do not have any control over each other. So that's the basic conclusion that he came up with. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, so now that we are done with uh, monohybrid and dihybrid cross, so, uh, can we talk about like heredity and genetics? And uh, because our topic is uh, heredity and evolution, mm -hmm. so uh, why exactly is uh, the understanding of genetics and heredity is important? Uh, yes, uh, we have been talking about some of uh, the aspects of why we are even discussing about genetics and heredity uh, since the first session. Yeah. So since we are going to sum up this uh, part of the topic of, uh, in this session, so let's just go back uh, to some of the things that has happened in the past. For example, plant breathing. You know, as we discussed uh, in the previous sessions that genetics or heredi heredity, understanding about this, scientifically it's a new thing. But in uh, practice, in application, thousands of years people have been applying this in their daily life in terms of agriculture, in terms of plant breeding, in terms of animal breeding. Because we pick and choose what kinds of variety do we want, right? Mm -hmm. So we pick and choose those characters and we try to hybridize. That's what um, Mendel did. Because in experiment, he since uh, when, whenever he has to hybridize two different plants, mm -hmm. he has to make sure sometimes he has to remove those anthers from one plant so that to make sure that they do not cross fertilize. I mean, uh, self fertilization do not happen. Okay. So to make sure that there is cross fertilization happening, so he has to actually remove some anthers or s let's say the pollen from the plant mm -hmm. so that they do not self fertilize. So he, a lot of things happen manually, even today. Uh, farmers still do, still mm -hmm. practice, mm -hmm. uh, animal breeders still practice, they bring in their animals, you know, uh, to the parent, to the variety or the to the kinds of animal, especially when it comes to, you know, milk production and all, this still happens in many places where you bring in your meal, you know, uh, so as to meet with a desired kind of parent, so okay. something like that happens. So it is, in traditional way, it is still going on, mm -hmm. even in plant breeding, in uh, animal breeding, so a lot of traditional way of uh, choosing the right care, I mean, the, uh, are the choice of character. Mm -hmm. What character do we want? So we pick those plants or we pick those animals and try to breed those uh, pl uh, plants or animals so that we have the same characters transmitted in the next offspring. So this has been going on since time immemorial and this is continuing uh, traditionally also. And uh, there is Again, another very important aspect of understanding heredity and genetics is it tells us a lot about diseases, you know, not just human diseases, plant diseases, diseases of the pets and all that. So it tells us a lot about how, how where are the diseases, uh, why are the diseases happening, uh, what is a gene constitution, wh what exactly happens in the genes, what kinds of genes we have which is making us have certain kinds of diseases. So genetic diseases, for example, sickle cell anemia is something very popular, thalassemia, hemophilia, Down syndrome, Turner syndrome, uh, Klinefelter syndrome. So there are so many kinds of genetic diseases, genetic disorders, you know. So understanding genetics and heredity. Uh, is so important that we now can uh, actually prevent some of those uh, by virtue of gene editing that uh, I'll come back a uh, little uh, in a bit. So there's a lot of things happening. So we're able to understand so many things that's happening in our body, in our chromosomes, in our genes, so that we can actually avoid some transmission of some of those uh, genetically inherited disease to the next offspring by not producing new offspring. You know? Yes. I mean, See, you can avoid producing an offspring if you if you think that okay, your your I mean the offspring. parents are likely since they have the mm -hmm. genes for those kinds of genetic diseases that uh, offspring is likely to have those uh, in, uh, genes inherited. Mm -hmm. So the parents can actually avoid producing offspring. You know, so that's one way of avoiding it. Otherwise, there are genetic uh, I mean uh, all kinds of genetic engineering. We we talk about gene editing now which is very popular gene editing, you know, mm -hmm. where you can actually play around with genes. When I say play around, I don't mean to say that they're just playing around. I mean to say that uh, there's a lot of technology coming up, tools coming up where you can uh, 
do different things with the genes. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things happening. So uh, again, genetic counseling is something that's becoming very popular in the sense that if parents are carriers of some genetic diseases, mm -hmm. so what are the precautions they can take? You know, so that or if uh, they have kids who have genetic disorders, mm -hmm. what are the things they need to do? So genetic so counseling. When you say parents who are the carriers of genetic disorders, mm -hmm. by parents you mean both the parents or either either parents? either either of the parents. Okay. So because for some diseases, you know, you need to have uh, both the alleles, both the parents should be the carrier for the disease. Okay. But for some, just one, you Isn't know, enough? yeah, something like that. So okay. uh, there are different kinds. So you. You understand your genes, what your genes have, uh, how vulnerable you are to certain diseases. Once you know that, then you can take precautionary measures, you know. So, uh, you can uh, say, for example, if your kids, for example, has certain kinds of genetic disorder, then you, the genetic counselor, the counselor can tell you what are the things that you can do. You know, because it can get worse because of certain things, by doing certain things or by avoiding certain things. So they will help you out with that. So genetic counseling is something uh, which should be encouraged at this time so that people, people, parents can take precautionary measures and take the right decision. It, the choice is theirs, you know. We cannot stop anybody from producing anything. Yeah. So the choice is there, but then counseling, at least let them have a choice to decide what they need to be doing or what they want to do with it, you know. What are the possibilities, what are the dangers that can happen if they uh, produce an Spring uh, with this, such kind they of they need to be aware about it. Yes, that's the reason that we have to popularize genetic counseling, you know. So then uh, we might be able to avoid some kinds of uh, diseases that uh, have that's happening now, or at least we will have that kind of you know how to take care of kids who have certain genetic diseases. Otherwise, parents are so helpless, you know, parents who have kids with genetic disorders, they don't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. So it, you need a lot of counseling for that emotionally also as well as medically also how to take care of such kids so Absolutely. yeah so there uh, so. do you because we don't have much time left do you want to give any message to our viewers how to study this chapter uh, easy tips there is uh, easy tips is that they have to calculate uh, i mean they have to take different kinds of combinations of parents mm -hmm. uh, then find out what kind of gametes those parents can produce you know why did even uh, we take for example we had taken specific kinds of homos sometimes we took homozygous parents you know sometimes we took the recessive homozygous parents why did we take the pure breed why did we not take the heterozygous condition mm -hmm. so only when they practice all those things mm -hmm. it will they will be able to understand and appreciate what exactly happens in her in 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 the process of inheritance what actu actually is inherited but one thing i want to come back to that uh, why we are studying genetics uh, because since we talked about gene editing you know again we know understand the genes the heredity and all these things we know but sometimes there are abuse also of this for example sex determination we are abusing yeah. by knowing the sex of the child especially in India it's still prevalent female feticide you know so th that's something and we also talk about designer babies wow. you know designer babies is that you are going to produce a child or babies which have only the desired character because there is now possibility that is a possibility because of the gene editing technology that has come up so people have already started talking about that so kids need students need to understand all this what what are the pros and cons how can they be misused you know although this can serve uh, really good to the humanity uh, to human beings and humanity so uh, but still they need to understand the uh, dangers behind all those things sure. right Thank you so much, ma'am, for joining us, for explaining the concept of heredity and evolution to me and to our viewers as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you to all the viewers as well. I'm sure you enjoyed uh, this chapter and there was so much understanding. And uh, like she said, that we need to be aware about it and we need to understand the concept of genetics so that uh, we can use the technology and not abuse it in future. Thank you so much and uh, stay with us. Don't go anywhere because we are coming back in a short while for all the class 9 students. We're coming back with the topic climate part 2. This is a geography lesson. So stay with us. Don't go anywhere and keep on watching NCRT's online resource material. Namaste.